Okay. All right, let's do this. Okay, so we're gonna actually start off with the um, let's start off with the uh, game bonnet, arcade bonnet, because I have a demo ready. So it's gonna be this yeah, one? yeah, that one, that one. Okay, we're gonna kick it off, pie style. Look at this. Um, this is the arcade bonnet silk screen by Phil B. Beautiful. This little, sorry, so I say I don't know what I said. I said, meant joy bonnet. There was the arcade bonnet we did two weeks ago. This is the joystick bonnet. It basically lets you uh, you plug this into a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W, and it gives you an analog joystick and then eight buttons: uh, select, start, A, B, X, Y, player one, player two. It's super cute. It's fully assembled, and uh, we even wrote code to make it work great with uh, like RetroPie emulation station. So let me show the demo, and then I'll show it off. Go to the person. overhead. Yeah, go to the overhead. So I have this set up. So it's got you know I've got my HDMI screen, and then I've got my Pi Zero. Um, you want to put it in a case because it's kind of like hard to grip otherwise. Okay. Um, but then you get all the buttons. You you know it's kind of like an SNES controller, NES controller. And uh, we're gonna play some video games. We're gonna play some video games. Hopefully, the music isn't loud enough. It'll get captured. We'll be okay. Hold on, let me lock this screen. But it's actually kind of fun, and it's like you know, you you don't have to use it for playing games. You could use it as a media controller or something. Um, but we just thought a lot of people would want to have this for portable gaming, because it's kind of nice. All you need is Super a cute. USB cable and an HDMI cable. It's amazing. And then uh, you can uh, suck at this game as much as I do. Bring the joy of sucking at games anywhere, anytime. There you go. So, um, you know, it's meant for use with a Raspberry Pi Zero. So I'll go and I'll zoom in here. One second, let me flip this around. Um, it's meant to be used with a Raspberry Pi Zero. You can... Um, Plug it right on top, and uh, you could use it with an A plus or a B plus or a three, but like you wouldn't be able to hold on to it. And a Pi Zero, if it you know it comes overclocked a little bit, it's safe to overclock. You can play like NES and Mame games, and um, we like RetroPie. It's um, a distribution that's pretty easy to use. Once you boot RetroPie, you just have to log in and then run our inst installer script to add the little thing that yeah. converts these button presses into um, arcade uh, keyboard presses. Um, but yeah, again, you, you don't have to use it for gaming. You can use it for anything. We just thought it would be fun to have it be for gaming. Yeah. And um, you don't have to solder it, which I, you know, we asked um, Samantha from Micro Center. She's, you know, I asked her, do you think people would like Raspberry Pi accessories assembled? You know, would they pay a little bit more for assembled? She said, yeah, yeah people would like the assembled stuff more. Yeah. So we're trying out um, having all our bonnets from now on be assembled with the headers already put on. So you just plug it in. Um, you do need to put headers on the Pi Zero, but you can like maybe hammer them in with like hammer headers, or maybe you know you can get a hold of a Raspberry Pi Zero with headers installed. So, okay. um, fun little mm -hmm. gaming accessory. We'll see. Okay. People can pin, can you know you can put it in your pocket, and all you need is a USB and HDMI. So Moving right along. That is the Joy Bonnet. Okay. Next up, we have another bonnet. Um, this one is assembled, is not assembled because um, you have to solder to use it anyways, so we felt like it would be more useful to come in pieces. It's a proto bonnet. It's kind of like the perma proto you know and love. You get power, ground, and like a kind of a breadboard uh, shape. Um, so on the bottom, go to the overhead, it's, it's fine. Um, on the bottom, you have like sort of a, a breadboard uh, like configuration where all these pads are connected. So you can use like chips sensors and then wire them up all the raspberry pi gpios are brought out up here so you can use wires to um connect it up again you can use it on a raspberry pi a plus b plus three whatever but it fits perfectly on a pi zero so we recommend it for use with a pi zero but you can use it with anything if you want okay Moving right along more yeah you know, pie stuff this is the pi cade hat this is a kind of an update from pi Maroney. they had a, a pi cade controller before but that was it used USB. This one, um, like the Arcade and, and Joy Bonnet, uses GPIO. Um, this is mostly for people who are building like arcade, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, emulators. It's better for use for the Pi 3 because the Pi 3 can emulate um, like you know Nintendo 64 and PlayStation type games, mm -hmm. um, whereas the Zero is kind of better for NES, maybe SNES and MAME type games. Um, it has a lot of GPIOs for buttons. You know, it has like up, down, left, right, select, start. It has a, a power switch, so you could actually use one of the pads for turning um, the device off safely to like do a safe shutdown. Um, it comes fully assembled, so that's kind of nice. Use terminal blocks, and it has audio amplifier built in as well. UK's so first official Kickstarter. Yeah, this was UK's first, and this is kind of the update to it. So I kind of like that they didn't, you know, rest on their laurels. They're like, we're going to upgrade this yeah. PiCade um, to make this hat much less expensive and a lot easier to use. Like, they don't have an app mega to do yeah. the keyboard stuff. They just use uh, Python U input. Speaking of, I'll be doing an article on Kickstarter Live because I thought they did a really good thing for makers who do hardware. Very excellent. Yeah. Amazing. Kickstarter it really, figured it out. Yeah, this is okay. a good idea. Next up. This is kind of interesting. So this is like, you know, it doesn't actually have a real name. I guess it's like a PLC Duino. It's um, thing. It's this thing, but it's a really useful thing. Product ID 3418. Yeah, it's 3418. <laughs> it's from uh, it's a group called Digital Loggers. They make a really nice IoT relay that we so like. It's open source PLC. It's, it's an open source <laughs> PLC. It's not open source hardware, but the software is open source. I just want to clarify that. It's basically an Arduino Mega. It has the same chip and interface as an Arduino Mega with an ESP8266 and a uh, TFT and then a bunch of like, like relay control outputs. So it's basically if you want to design your own PLC for like industrial controls and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a PLC, you can pick up one of these and like you get to use Arduino that you know and love and you get um, Wi-Fi control, which is like not uh, it's not inexpensive in a PLC, but with this, with the ESP, it's it's very simple, and um, it's fully documented, so it's like very easy for you to design your own PLC control. So I don't do PLC, but I thought this was kind of interesting, and for people who do do industrial controls, robotics, I thought this could be kind of handy. A lot of protected outputs, relays. We have friends who do PLC. Yeah, PLC. You know me. Yeah. Okay. You know this. Uh, this could come in very handy. All right. So check it out. Next up. It's a connector. Uh, it's a it's a little friend connector. This is a uh, 1.27 millimeter pitch 2x5 SWD connector. It's used for um, people who want to add SWD connectors to our NRF52 Featherwing. Uh, we don't include it, and we'll explain why. But if you do want to add uh, an SWD connector to something, you can solder this in. It's a surface mount version. But you can bend the pins out and, and like solder it into a through-hole connection if you really want. And this mm -hmm. is for use with like a J-Link or um, other SWD debugger connector. Okay. Every Cortex chip on the market basically uses these connectors and this interface. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, you will be real soon because it's used for everything. pretty much everything now. Okay. We have a new Featherwing. Uh, this is last week's uh, new product, Featherwing. It is a, an update, well, a, a revision of the Music Maker Featherwing. This time, instead of headphone out, it has an amplifier built in. And so you can just connect speakers directly. There's some 4-ohm speakers, and it will uh, bump some tunes for you. It uh, works with all of our feathers, which is really nice. Even, you know, the ESP8266 or the NR52, it's all been tested. Um, and you get MP3, Og Vorbis, you know, even wave playback. And again, you have the amplifier built in. So it's really good for projects where you want to do, um, you know, some audio playback and you don't want to have a separate amplifier. You just want to have speaker tracking. My entire music collection is in Og Vorbis, Lady Ada. I'm I not, tip my fedora to you. I'm not surprised. And I have a demo even, so I can put this joy bonnet away and show this off. Those who know, choose AUG. Yes. Well, it AUG is free. I was actually looking up the MP3 patents, and they still have another year before they expire. Um, so, for example, here is uh, the feather wing on top of a uh, 328 or 324. And we made this music, so YouTube, don't content ID us. Yeah. We have a physical album. We made this music. So, drive some speakers very nicely. And uh, it's not very loud because I didn't want it to overwhelm, but you can get loud. pretty loud, three watts per channel. Uh, just make sure that your battery or your USB connector can yeah. supply the current. But um, pretty you know handy. How loud it is? It's so loud that Six when watts. Lady Ada has her door closed and doing engineering far away from me, and I'm trying to sleep, I can still hear it. <laughs> All lies. Uh, All right. Very loud, going. but yeah, you want to do music, playback, add it to your feather. Who knows what you want to do, like Bluetooth? It's a little too loud. MP3. Okay. What? 
It's okay. It's good loud. Yeah, good loud. Good loud. Let's keep going. Okay. This is a sharp uh, uh, proximity sensor. I don't remember the exact part number because it's like GPYF0360, whatever. From Palulu. Um, it's from Palulu. Let's put on a breakout. This is a sensor that's really good for nearby proximity detection. It'll detect if something is between point, uh, 0.5 centimeters and 5 centimeters away. So good for like robots to you know, keep it from bumping into the wall or something, or if you want to detect like a hand wave. It doesn't tell you how far it is. It just tells you that something is in the way. Um, handy sensor. Some people requested it. We mm -hmm. have it. Okay, next up. This is all the stuff that we're catching up from last week. Pi 3 commute mo compute module. This is the non-light version of the Raspberry Pi compute module. We've uh, talked about the light version and the board that goes with it. Um, this is basically a Raspberry Pi 3 with all the GPIO broken out. And this version also has four gigabytes of MMC memory, so it's a nice fast uh, flash memory. So it's all in one. It's basically a, a computer. And then it's in a so dim format, so you can yeah. plug it into a connector very easily. So basically, if you don't want something, we have that board that you can put it in. The developer board. Yeah. So this is, you know, they're not going to sell that many. That's why this is. It's like even though it doesn't have the connectors, it's more expensive than the Pi Three because um, they're just not. They don't make many, many of these. This is not a not high volume. Yeah, it's not a high volume manufacturer. But for people who want to, for example, make their own PLC that has a Raspberry Pi, you may not be able to fit the Raspberry Pi into it. Or some wearables or like a. NEC has that monitor that you can put in the Raspberry Pi compute yeah. module. Store display, stuff like that. Store display stuff. Okay. There's stuff when you want to have a very slim version and you're willing to pay a little bit more. It's still a really good deal. You get a quad core, 64-bit yeah. uh, ARM 8 processor, that four gigabytes of flash. And of course, all the GPIO are brought out. So if you need something where you have a Raspberry Pi 3 and you need a ton of GPIO, you get like 100, like all of them. Um, instead of with the Raspberry Pi 3, where you only get like 30-ish uh, GPIO that you can use. Okay, a couple more to go. And then, yeah, check out the dev board we have as well. Look at this cute robot. It's coming soon. Look at this, this cute is the robot. Watson TJ bot. Um, this is a, a kind of a, this is a, this is a, a rendering, but it's a cardboard cutout robot with a Raspberry Pi and a bunch of parts, and we'll have it in the store uh, soon. We're, we're actually tweaking the uh, cardboard to be a little bit easier to use. We have some improvements for it. You um, met Watson. We did. Yeah. Well, okay. a rendering of Watson. Yeah. Uh, this, so the, this is kind of like a little device that lets you um, build your own voice interfaces. So, for example, you want to build your own like Alexa or you want to build your own yeah. uh, smart agent. Um, the Watson will do, the, the Watson software will do the voice recognition for you. You need a switch, though. As well, per. Need switch. Got to turn it off, Watson. Are you I, listening? It did. Yeah, you could add a switch. Yeah. Okay. Um, it would be very easy to add a switch. So you can, um, so you can do like it does the voice recognition. Then you can add the commands and responses you want. So you can program yeah. it yourself. So it's, it's kind of more of a developer tool if you want to use the Watson back end. Yeah. Um, so there's some instructional, tuto instructional tutorials that we link to. You can check it out. And then uh, we want to basically design this to be a no, no solder kit. And uh, so it's pretty easy to put together. That's right. You just have to get some API keys and stuff, and All you're ready right. to go. We also have a video. We do, but we're not going to show it, because this is the assembly video, and it's available on the oh, product page. okay, yeah. Yeah. Down below. Down below. Okay. Okay, so then we're finally... Here we are, the star of the show tonight, <sighs> besides you, Lady Ada. Here it is. Okay. Why we have the code, why we're all here tonight. This is a long time coming. This is the Feather... Uh, NRF52 Blue Fruit. This is a new Feather Core, so it's kind of a big deal. Um, instead of uh, having a, a Bluetooth module plus, you know, an at Mega 3, you know, 32U4 M0, this is a Bluetooth chip that is powerful enough that not only can it run the Bluetooth, you know, soft device, it can do the Bluetooth communication stuff, um, but it's also powerful enough chip that you can program it at the same time. So it has, you know, like a ton of flash. It runs at 64 megahertz. It's a Cortex M4. Um, it's the latest chip from Nordic. And um, there's an Arduino core for it. So it's really nice. This Feather basically, uh, once you download our board support package, it works really well with Arduino. You can do analog inputs, PWNs, GPIO, NeoPixels, all the stuff you know This must love. be very expensive though. No, it's actually, not that expensive because you program the chip directly. You don't have a secondary processor, so it's less expensive. Even though it's more powerful, it's less expensive. How much would this cost? It's about twenty-four ninety-five. Stop. 
<laughs> what the heck is wrong with you? Uh, so this is designed by K-Town. K-Town did the hardware and TAC did a massive amount of software and firmware design, um, including the amazing bootloader. Uh, the bootloader for this um, auto resets, so you don't have to press any buttons or like do any noodling around. You know, you, when, you, when you upload from Arduino, it automatically uploads immediately and then restarts the sketch. Um, you also have over-the-air programming uh, working. We don't recommend it to, for now. We're still testing it, but you will be able to program that core chip over the air by like you can distribute firmware. That's what everyone wanted. And it works with all of our feather wings. So, so you've like got like 50. Like 50. Well, except for the GPS because of the Not UART. GPS. Except for GPS, all of them work, and okay. uh, I tested them. So if you want to add like an OLED, or you want to add sensors, or you want to add a display, or you want to add a TFT to it, um, data logging, all these things are possible. Um, so I'm pretty excited. It's it's really powerful, and again, it's it's native Bluetooth. Uh, our Bluefruit apps, you know, our Bluefruit app does work with it, and I have a demo I can show. Hopefully, it. it'll work. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention that if you have sketches from our previous Bluefruit, uh, you know, the ones that had a um, a 32U4 plus a, a module, you might have to adapt those because now that you're running the code natively, you don't have this AT command that you have to run. You'd actually just tell the just chip directly. So okay. it's a little Let's try different. Try this demo. This is always. Scary. This is a little bit scary. Oh boy. Okay. Also, the app my, the app was not picking up my fingerprints. So the hardware was working well. Okay, so okay. this is the hardware. There and then it is. NeoPixel ring. NeoPixel ring. And then I've got the uh, iOS. iOS. So let me... Hold on. I'm not sure your password. I'm not sure my password. Not that it matters. I'd have to, like, come here and grab it. Okay, so let me check my peripheral. So it shows up as a... Can you see yep. the text? Okay. Yep. So let me, this is the problem I was having. It wasn't picking up my button press. There you go. So you connect to it. And then the demo I just had is the color picker. You have, you know, we have this controller that lets you stream like GPS and location magnetometer and, you know, the control pad. But the demo that I was going to do is just the color picker. Okay. So if I say red and then send the color. Wow, it worked. It worked. And this then, is real. This is alive. And then if I say blue. The genuine thing. Oh, you know what? It's, um, sorry, one second. It's so bright you can't tell. I know, but I... Your wire I, came out. It came out, yeah. Hold on. Oh, wait. Now I broke it. You broke it. <laughs> you, got, you got enough live demo. It was demo. totally working for like a moment. <clears throat> you got live demo enough. Yeah. Okay. Shoot. All right, I'll get it We'll fix it in post. Okay. With that lady, you know what that is? The standing we'll have a video soon for it. Maybe uh, while, while answering questions, I'll get it working too. Yeah, well, speaking of, that's the end of new products. Yes. Bye-bye. All right.